at this cool little guy here. Ah, two arms. Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop RPGs can be a really simple and inexpensive hobby. But if you're like me, sometimes you just can't resist the call of the little plastic monsters and heroes to spend your money on and throw out on the table at game night to really take things up a notch. This video is a guide for those wanting to get into 3D miniatures for D&D and other RPGs. We'll start by covering some of the basic brands that you can expect to find. We'll talk about the pros and cons, where you can buy them. And then we'll also talk about some of the cheaper options and where you can really get some good deals because I'm a bit of a bargain shopper. So make sure you stick around till the end of the video for those tips. Additionally, while I love 3D miniatures, I'm working on a second video that actually covers some cheaper and easier alternatives to 3D miniatures. So keep an eye out for that one coming soon. Now, one of the big choices you'll have to make when you are buying 3D miniatures is, do you wanna buy miniatures that are already painted or do you wanna paint the miniatures yourself? Personally, I really like to paint them myself, but I wanna start by talking about some of the pre-painted options first. If you're going to a local shop, usually one of the only options you'll find are WizKids miniatures. Now, you're gonna pay quite a bit more for pre-painted miniatures, as you might imagine. These figures, if you're buying them in a box with a bunch of others that you can actually see, generally are gonna cost about $6 each. WizKids has officially licensed miniatures for Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, and even Critical Role. If you wanna save a little bit of money and get a little more variety, you can check out some of their booster packs. These are boxes of miniatures that generally cost about $20 each and come with four miniatures. You don't know what you're getting, so it's a bit of a risk, but some people really like collecting them that way. So I've got a few of these, and generally I can say I don't really like them. Once I started painting miniatures myself, I realized that the paint jobs on these are pretty poor. Now, some areas do have a lot of detail, and sometimes I think they might use decals or other methods, but uh, for the most part, I'm not very impressed. However, if you're not much of a connoisseur and your players aren't either, you throw these out on the table at game night, no one's gonna care. They're gonna look totally fine and you're gonna have a lot of fun with them. You'll also find these paint jobs to be uh, pretty durable in general. Some of them are really bad though. Look at this drow. I would barely call this a painted miniature. So personally, I usually go for unpainted miniatures nowadays because I've learned to paint and I really like to do it. However, it is really time consuming. So if you're not into that, you know, just stick to the painted miniatures, they're fine. Still, the big brands that you'll definitely find when you walk into most hobby shops are WizKids unpainted miniatures and Reaper Bones. Let's start by talking about Reaper. Reaper does make metal miniatures as well, and those are the more traditional kind. Back in the 80s and 90s, you could really only find metal miniatures for the most part. They're higher quality, they're nice and heavy, and they're definitely a little more expensive. So plastic miniatures have definitely taken over the market for the most part, and Reaper Bones are their premium plastic line. These figures are available for generally $2.50 to $3 a piece for the little ones, and of course you're gonna pay a lot more for bigger ones that use more plastic. Now the quality for Reaper Bones really varies. When they first came out, some of the details were really lacking, and some of the sculpts just honestly looked bad. But they've gotten a lot better over the years, and they now even have this Reaper Bones black line, which is not actually black, they're darker gray, and they're made of a harder plastic and hold detail better, and I really like them. All of my Reaper Bones miniatures are incredibly durable, and I've been really impressed by that. I have no hesitation about throwing them in a bin, about letting my kids play with them. I know they're gonna hold up, and uh, now that I'm mostly 3D printing miniatures in resin, uh, I kind of missed that feature. And yes, I have tried some supposedly tougher resins, and I even did a video a while back, and yeah, they don't even come close to the durability of Reaper Bones miniatures. Now, Reaper says you don't need to prime their Bones miniatures, but I've really only found that to be true with Reaper paints, which I don't have much of, so I always just prime them with my Vallejo. I also really primer. love Reaper's website. It's really very easy to search by class or race. And by the way, every time I've ordered directly from Reaper, they've thrown in a free miniature or two and sometimes a free bottle of paint or two. So just a little bonus for ordering directly through them. Hey, before we get to the next miniatures, I wanna give a quick shout out to thank my friends at 1985 Games who are partnering with me to bring you this video. They sell NPC and story cards, dice, 
counterspell miniatures, but for this video, I really want to highlight their Dungeon Craft series, which are big packs of 2D terrain. We're talking maps, buildings, vehicles, monster tokens, and more. These are a great supplement to your miniatures, and I absolutely love them. Having a bunch of these around will make you such a versatile game master, ready to improvise with all sorts of great locations. There's a lot more great stuff, so head on over to 1985 Games now. Just click on the link in the video description. Also, as a bonus for my viewers, use coupon code WASD20 for 10% off at checkout. Next, let's talk about WizKids unpainted miniatures. So these are pretty comparable in price and you'll definitely find them in a lot of game shops alongside Reaper's miniatures. Uh, I, however, don't like them quite as much. When they first came out, I was pretty high on them. I thought they were great. They're definitely a little more detailed than the earlier Reaper bones were. But now that I've had a little more experience with them, I don't really like them as much. I find them to be kind of ugly sometimes. They are pre-primed, which is kind of nice. Uh, so you don't have to prime them at all. However, the primer gets a little bit gunky and uh, I actually know some people who are really into miniatures who will strip this primer off and prime them themselves because of that. There are a few sculpts that I really like and if you're looking for certain D&D &D monsters that are official monsters like the Beholder or Displacer Beast or things like that, some of them look really cool. Like this one is just straight out of the monster manual. I absolutely love this sculpt. But yeah, a lot of them just don't look great. And you know, things like these kobolds here, it's almost like they tried to get too much detail in there and end up looking kind of crappy. There are some bad mold lines, like uh, you can see on this cape here, which I tested some paint on. There's a really bad one there on this shield right here, right across it. So yeah, WizKids unpainted, they're fine. Sometimes I prefer them to bones, but usually I'm gonna prefer Reaper's miniatures over these. Now, in terms of where you can buy these, I did mention your local game shops, but if you don't have any local game shops around you, of course, Amazon's a good option. I really like, however, Miniature Market's website. They have a really nice website and I recommend you check it out. If you're looking for some pricier options that might give you a step up in quality, you can definitely check out Games Workshop Miniatures. Most of those are for Warhammer or there's a Lord of the Rings war game, but um, they are really nice. They're just really expensive and some assembly required. There's also some great more independent smaller companies like Crippled God Foundry or Broken Anvil Miniatures. Crippled God Foundry has sent me a bunch of stuff over the years and they're really nice resin miniatures, a little more fragile than Reaper Bones and stuff like that, but you're definitely gonna pay a little more, something like $6 per figure, or maybe up to 12 sometimes, or for bigger ones, definitely in the 20 to $30 range. Broken Anvil has some really nice looking stuff and they're a great company as well. Also, Hero Forge miniatures. If you want custom miniatures that you can design yourself and then either 3D print yourself or have shipped to your house, either in unpainted or colored plastic, these are really nice. This one right here, I ordered unpainted and painted it myself. And this little frog guy right here actually came off their color 3D printer. So yeah, really cool. And even if you don't order their miniatures, the character builder on their website is just so much fun. So definitely check it out. Now, the money saving options. If you're wanting to get a lot of miniatures on the cheap, here are some good ways. First off, Reaper Bones Kickstarters. They only happen once every year or two, but they are such a great value. I backed one of their Kickstarters. I still have tons and tons of unpainted miniatures because of it. And yeah, in terms of bang for your buck, I think I probably paid about a dollar per miniature when you break it all down, maybe even less. And there are some pretty big ones in the bundle. Just keep in mind that when you're backing a Kickstarter, you're playing the long game. For the most recent one, I think the uh, fulfillment time is like two years, so yeah. So you can go to Kickstarter and just follow Reaper Miniatures and then you'll get notifications when they're doing a new Kickstarter. But there are also a lot of other companies these days doing miniature Kickstarters, so keep your eyes open for those. Just make sure you're not getting 3D printable miniatures if you do not have a 3D printer. Now there are some board games that also provide a really great way to get a bunch of miniatures on the cheap. This D&D board game here, which is a huge box, I think I paid 40 or $50 for this and it comes with about 40, 42 plastic heroes and monsters, including this big old black dragon here and this Etten. There's some really cool ones. And I've painted some of these up over the years and they're, they're pretty good. They've got some nasty seam lines and things like that, but overall they're pretty good and a good value. 
Other board games I've heard good things about in terms of getting a lot of miniatures. Massive Darkness is kind of a dungeon crawl board game, comes with a lot of cool miniatures. Uh, Hate is another one I've heard good things about. Blood Rage is a good one if you want a lot of Viking warriors and some really cool monsters. Zombicide if you want to get a bunch of zombies. Most of those games are from Cool Mini or Not, Simon. Uh, they make a lot of cool board games with great miniatures, and you're going to get some good bang for your buck there. eBay is another great option. You can often find painted miniatures on eBay, so if you don't want to paint your own, you can find someone who's painted a bunch and now they're selling their collection. And of course, unpainted miniatures too, because we all have a big pile of shame. And well, personally, I've been thinking about putting a lot of mine on eBay recently because there's just certain ones I know I'm never gonna paint. You can get some good cheap packs on Amazon as well, but be a little bit careful because I have found some really nice looking packs for a great price that are actually quite a bit bigger than traditional tabletop RPG miniatures. So you wanna make sure you're getting 28 millimeter or 32 millimeter scale miniatures. So I think your average miniature there would be a little bit more than an inch high in general. And I know a lot of those are like two inch high miniatures. <music> Lastly, 3D printing. Yeah, there's the initial investment of paying a couple hundred dollars for a 3D printer. However, once you have that, man, you can print 3D miniatures so inexpensively. I'm talking about like 10 or 15 cents worth of resin for your average miniature. They're a great value. And I've printed big old things that would have cost me 40 or $50 in the store for about 10, $12. There's definitely a learning curve. It's a little bit of work, but I absolutely love it. It's a part of the hobby I'm really enjoying these days. I'll put a link to a video I made about 3D printing for D&D right up there. Um, it's a couple years old now, but I stand by everything I said. I still absolutely love 3D printing for D&D. I think it's great. So if you have any thoughts, I would love to hear from you as well. Is there anything I left out here? Any brands or methods you recommend for getting miniatures on the cheap? Leave them down in the comments. If you want to support the channel, I do have some affiliate links down in the description. And there's also a link to my Patreon down there. I want to thank the WASD20 patrons for their support. Patrons like this are such a key part of what I do here. They help keep the channel afloat and they get some pretty cool rewards too. Things like map drawing streams, behind the scenes videos, and things like that. So check it all out over at patreon.com slash WASD20. All right, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody. You'll see me again very soon. Bye.